Bill Lind has long been fascinated by the Klondike Gold Rush. He had grown up hearing about the heroic exploits of his grandfather, John Grieve Lind, a railroader turned prospector from London, Ontario. Bill's father, John's son, Jed, began collecting memorabilia from that period and passed that fascination on to Phil. In fact, the collection became so large, it has now found a permanent home at the University of British Columbia. Now, Phil is translating that lifelong passion about all things Klondike into a new book. Here to talk about Tales of an Unsung Sourdough, the extraordinary Klondike adventures of Johnny Lind is Phil Lind. Welcome. Thank you. Now, uh, let's talk about the book. How did it come about exactly? I understand a lot of it is based on primary source material, Johnny's handwritten journals, which were later collected, copied, and typed out by uh, one of your family members in 1983, nearly 90 years after he wrote them. That's that's an incredible uh, piece of history to have in the family. It was, it was lucky that he did that because he was a very... Um, understated man and he um, as opposed to many of the Klondike kings he didn't go into town every every now and then or every day um, and uh, gamble and, and show off and things like that he mainly stayed in his cabin and um, and just worked <laughs> uh, and um, I think uh, I think that that maybe is the difference between him and many of the others because there was uh, hundreds probably that made millions at the time, but uh, most of that was kind of, kind of spent because people thought that uh, the gold would be there the next year when they when they uh, got the piles out of the ground and and put it through the sluice ways um but it wasn't there and so it, 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 this it was a massive strike but it was very quickly dissipated uh it only lasted two or three years but it, it was really something i mean uh, the uh, panning for gold in uh in in california in 1849 yielded about five of five dollars and in panning for gold in the Klondike and, and those two creeks yielded about forty dollars so you, you know there was quite a difference between the two now the the Klondike gold rush uh for those who don't know between 1896 and 99 saw a hundred thousand people converge on the Yukon in search of uh quick riches and adventure your grandfather was already there when the big strike happened in August of 1896, um, what brought him there? Was it, did it really come down to a coin toss? Yeah, it came down to a coin toss. He and his partner uh, got to Tacoma and uh, they uh, flipped a coin for oil for Venezuela or gold in Alaska. And Alaska came up, so they, they went up there. Now, uh, there's no overstating the the treacherous kind of conditions that Johnny and others faced. Uh, for instance, heading up the 33-mile uh, Chilkoot Trail, you tell a story about how he became snowblind and had to be led by the arm for the last two days of, of the trek, and yet he seemed so nonchalant about it all. Uh, were people just tougher back then or what? Uh, well, you know, it was a, it was the time when th there was a big, big recession or, or depression at the time, and there was uh, most guys, most people were out of work, and um, so a hundred thousand made attempts to get up there. About about half of them actually reached Dawson. Um, the other half either got discouraged or and went home or or perished. Um, it, it was tough. It was very, very, very tough. And um, they, uh, you know, they had winters of uh, minus 40, minus 45 degrees. This is uh, Fahrenheit, but it's a, I probably the same in, in uh, centigrade. But, and and these, 
this lasted for two or three months. That every day it was that that cold, and they and they had uh, no windows in their little cabins. Uh, had no heat. I mean, the heat was just a fireplace or whatever, and uh, no no anything. I mean, really, they had nothing. So they just they struggled to survive for the first year or two until supplies came in. Now, all told, Johnny was a big success in the Klondike. Uh, how much uh, riches would you say he left with? I don't know, but he 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 came up with enough money to uh, to uh, uh, start a cement company in in Ontario. With, with a number of other investors, but uh, so he had he had some money, that's for sure, some serious money. Now, uh, what what do you think his his legacy is? You point out he wasn't the most famous sourdough, but he did inspire a big collection of Klondike artifacts, which is now home at UBC. Yeah, well, I mean, he was a, a quiet man and. Uh, thoughtful and very, very uh, empathetic. Um, and, and I think that's what we're, we're hoping that, uh, that he's left to, to his family, you know, that, uh, that we're, uh, we're always concerned about somebody else. Uh, and um, I think that's, uh, that's pretty, pretty typical. All right, let's leave it there. Uh, Tales of an Unsung Sourdough, The Extraordinary Klondike Adventures of Johnny Lind by Phil Lind and Robert Brell is available from Page Two Books. My thanks to author Phil Lind. Thank you.